1950, a new landmark arose in New York City. People who had seen war twice in their lifetime were determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. This new building was dedicated for that task, a permanent headquarters for the United Nations, the world's workshop for peace. flags fly before the building, it's a sign that the nations are gathering to discuss the world's problems. Today, the General Assembly is meeting. Many visitors come to listen to the debates, some of them arriving early to be sure to get a seat in the visitors' gallery. General Assembly Hall, where the General Assembly meets for several months every year. It's the only organ of the United Nations where all member nations are represented. and their advisers will be seated, final preparations are made. Documents for today's discussion are distributed. The delegations are seated in alphabetical order and are identified by the names of their countries. Each country has one vote. Earphones are tested, for through them the delegates hear the speeches in five different languages. At this podium will sit the elected president of the General Assembly, with the Secretary General of the United Nations on one side and the executive assistant on the other. This gavel, carved out of wood from Iceland, is the symbol of authority of the Assembly's president. As the moment for the opening of the meeting draws near, the delegates arrive. the representatives of the 60 countries which make up the United Nations, from the Middle East and Asia, from Europe, Africa and the Americas, from Australia, New Zealand and Iceland. Many countries send their most distinguished statesmen, often their foreign ministers. In the delegates' lounge, the representatives and their aides hold last-minute discussions. and then they move into the General Assembly Hall.
the appointed hour, when all is ready, the president for the year comes to the podium. Here is Madame Vijaya Lakshmi Pandit of India, presiding at the eighth session of the General Assembly. I declare open the 457th plenary meeting of the General Assembly. The first speaker today is Lester Pearson, Foreign Minister of Canada. Madam President, fellow delegates, if there are opportunities now for easing in some degree international tension, I hope that this Eighth Assembly will use them to the full. We may not be able to change the facts of international life by revolutions in our assembly, but by omission or commission, by what we say or do not say, we can lighten or darken the international atmosphere in which our problems must be solved. The spirit of reason and conciliation which has for long animated the free peoples in approaching these problems will give an eloquent and sincere expression of this Behind the scenes, correspondents are busy getting out the news of the General Assembly to the world. To do this work, news agencies and newspapers of many countries maintain correspondence permanently at United Nations headquarters. While the correspondent works in his office, he can listen to the proceedings in the Assembly Hall. Such as this speech of Ambassador Belaunde of Peru. Though the galleries of the Assembly Hall are full, Visitors continue to arrive, for this internationally designed headquarters of the United Nations attracts over a million people a year from many countries. Guides speaking several languages take visitors on tours of the buildings and explain the purposes they serve. This model is used to explain how the buildings are laid out. Here is the General Assembly, where we saw Madame Pandit presiding. This is the conference building where United Nations councils hold their meetings. And in this tall building works the United Nations Secretariat. First, the visitors see the chambers of the three councils. The councils are smaller than the General Assembly, and their members are elected by the delegates in the General Assembly. This is the trusteeship council chamber, whose design and decoration were contributed by Denmark. The council is not meeting today. About 200 million people live in territories which are governed by other nations. In some of them, known as trust territories, the governing nations are, by agreement, directly responsible to the United Nations for their administration. The trusteeship council receives their reports, sends missions of inquiry into the territories, and hears petitions from their peoples. This was the scene some time ago when emissaries from British Togoland came to speak to the Council on behalf of their fellow citizens. Mr. Leslie Knox Munro of New Zealand presided at the meeting. The, the Council has resumed, and I call upon Mr. Alassani to address the Council. Mr. Alassani. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Trusteeship Council, 
I have come here as a petitioner representing the chiefs and peoples of Tagomba, Nanumba, Mamprisi, and Gonja, who are within the northern section of Togoland and the United Kingdom trusteeship. I accepted to come not in order to discredit Togoland unificationists in your eyes, for after all, they are fully entitled to their own convictions and desires, be such desires genuine or selfishly motivated, nor to tell you my own personal wishes. But I have come to tell you what the people have asked me to tell you and to assure you that they mean what they say and their minds are firmly made up. On their way to the next council chamber, the visitors pause before a painting, symbolizing the age-old struggle of humanity for a lasting peace. visitors approach the chamber of the Economic and Social Council, which is in session today. The design and decoration of this room came from Sweden. Here, as in all United Nations meetings, several languages are used. But for those who may not understand the speaker's language, there are earphones which bring them a translation in English, French, Spanish, Russian and Chinese. Rétrospectif trop prononcé. Et il y a un certain nombre de choses à prendre en considération, en particulier la date à laquelle les différents rapports... Like and the following in this regard, there are a certain number of other factors which must be taken into account, in particular the date at which the various reports are prepared. Даты, которые относятся данные, на которых основаны в свою очередь эти доклады. Nos parece también que si fuéramos a postergar la discusión sobre la situación económica y social, el objetivo de las Naciones Unidas es no solo para prevenir la guerra en sí, sino también para remover las causas de la guerra. This council is therefore concerned with questions of economic and social progress, cultural advancement, and the promotion of human rights, practical questions of everyday life. This council also brings together the representatives of the United Nations specialized agencies, each of which works in a particular field, education, food and agriculture, health, labor, loans for reconstruction and development, communications, and many others. The third chamber on the visitors' program is that of the Security Council. It was designed and decorated by Norway. It's in the Security Council that the nations, by discussion and negotiation, deal with actual threats to peace and security. China, France, the United Kingdom, the United States and the Soviet Union are permanent members of this council and six others are elected by the assembly. The five permanent members must all agree on any important decision. It was in this council that the disputes between Israel and some of its neighboring states were discussed. At this meeting, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Dag Hammarskjöld, was present and addressed the council. Mr. President, before presenting General Benneken, may I take this opportunity to express my special concern as Secretary General regarding the outbreaks of violence and the recent incidents which have taken place in Palestine. May I make a strong appeal to the parties concerned to refrain from spreading rumors and from provocative acts which would contribute to a widening of tensions in the area, and especially 
to avoid any premature actions which could jeopardize the Council's present endeavors. And now, Mr. President, I take pleasure in introducing to you and to the other members of the Security Council, Major General Dan Benneke, Chief of Staff of the United Nations Truth Supervision Organization. Taking part in the debate were Abba Iban of Israel and Farid Zenedin of Syria. Mr. President, I welcome this opportunity uh, to give a preliminary outline of my government's views on the unfounded objections raised by Syria against the execution of the Benot Yaakov Canal project under a concession held by the Palestine Electric Corporation. We feel it necessary, sir, to emphasize the real and actual need for objectivity and clarity in the discussion because we already sense that our opponents are apt and ready to inject into the discussion. The guided tour doesn't take the visitors behind the scenes in the tall glass wall building which houses the Secretariat. Here are the offices where the permanent staff of the United Nations carries on its day-to-day -day work. To get a glimpse of this work, let's follow the morning mail van. Thousands of letters arrive each day. Letters from governments, from United Nations representatives all over the world, from private citizens of every country, from United Nations offices on all continents. Letters from political observers, doctors, economists and engineers who are working in the field for the United Nations. The letters move swiftly to the offices in the 38 stories of this building. We're now in the office of the Technical Assistance Administration of the United Nations. And here's a letter from the Middle East, from a country there which is receiving technical advice on problems of modernizing its small industries, such as home weaving. All kinds of technical advice are given by this agency's experts to countries who ask for it, from improvement of handicrafts to development of hydroelectric plants. That's right, yes. That's correct, that's sir. So, what is TK Buses of? Personal Jasak, the Hawaii Jahaz. Yeah. Oh, Miss Lane, could you take these two, please? Yes, sir. The men and women who work here come from all parts of the world. They don't represent their governments. They are responsible only to the United Nations itself. On this floor are the offices of UNICEF the United Nations Children's Fund. To many throughout the world, UNICEF has given the United Nations a personal meaning, for it brings to millions of mothers and children of many countries milk and medicine, as well as basic education. Here, United Nations doctors and health experts study the problems of far-off places and select the supplies and equipment needed there to make children healthy. Dr. Wan, is this the design you have selected? Yes, it is. 
，中文叫什么？奶罩，保护着母亲的奶头的。哦，是。Give me long distance, please. I'd like to place a call to Geneva. Operator, this is Plaza 41200. May I have overseas operator 3642 to Geneva, Switzerland, please? Está Buenos Aires, Argentina. Paris. Habla Buenos Aires, Argentina. United Nations, 1235. Thank you. As the world's meeting place, United Nations headquarters speaks to countries all over the world. Both at headquarters and through information centers in many capital cities, the Department of Public Information makes available the latest information about United Nations affairs. This department is responsible for making known the work of the United Nations in words and pictures, through films and radio, by publications and on television. For the success of the United Nations work depends on a well-informed public opinion. The department has much to tell about the decisive role the United Nations has already played in the life of several nations and millions of people. How, for instance, the United Nations brought self-government to Libya. How the United Nations brought peace and independence to Indonesia. Millions of mothers and children were helped by UNICEF. Or how United Nations technical assistance is helping underdeveloped countries who have the will but lack the skills to help themselves. of the Secretariat building, in the office of its chief, the Secretary General. We shan't find Mr. Hammarskjöld here now, while the General Assembly is in session, for one of his many duties is to take part in the Assembly's proceedings. In the General Assembly, he sits at the President's side, representing the administrative branch of the organization, the Secretariat. It's his duty not only to warn of threats to peace, but to carry out with his staff the decisions of the representatives of the nations. Decisions arrived at after painstaking negotiations and discussions and debates. Decisions taken by vote. Soviet Union, United Kingdom, United States, Uruguay, Venezuela, Yemen, Conferences may continue far into the night, for the nation's search for solutions to the world's problems is a continuing task. Nations like men must live with each other every day. For that reason, the future of the United Nations rests in the hands of all who can help to give to new generations a greater knowledge of each other and a wiser approach to the problems of international life.